Mariah Carey? I don't know her. If you got that reference, then chances are you are familiar with Mariah Carey and her drama. Well, today we will be talking all about Mariah and her famous feuds. From her beef with JLo to Eminem. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have Miley Cyrus. Apparently, Miley Cyrus has never been a fan of Mariah Carey. In a 2016 Elle cover story, Miley said, and I quote, I've never really been a fan because it's so much about Mariah Carey. That's part of her shtick. I can see through it. That's part of what makes her a gay icon. Like, it's about Mimi, it's about what she's wearing, and it's about her. Miley continued on saying, What I make isn't about me, it's about sharing my story. It's about someone being connected to what I'm saying. That's why you don't see me like on the side of buses selling shit. I mean, what am I gonna do? Sell makeup? And that was a jab towards Mariah and her deal with MAC Cosmetics holiday line. Yikes, Miley went off. Coming in at number nine, we have Madonna. This might just be the worst insult someone could ever receive. Back in the 1990s, Madonna said that she'd rather kill herself than be Mariah Carey. She then proceeded on saying that Mariah wasn't the brightest. Continuing on, in 1996, in an interview with Spin, Madonna said that Mariah's work is anything other than serious art. Wow, Madonna did not hold back at all. In our eighth spot, we have Tommy Motola. Tommy Motola is an American music executive and producer. He was the chairman and CEO of Sony Music Entertainment for nearly 15 years. Now he's in charge of Casablanca Records with Universal. He is also Mariah Carey's ex-husband. After the two split, things got messy for Mariah. He literally tried to sabotage her and destroy her career. He must have really hated her in order for him to do that. Like for example, the whole J-Lo and Mariah feud is said to be started because of him. It started when J-Lo released a song with a sample that Mariah was already using. Another time, Mariah was planning to do a slow duet with Ja Rule, but J-Lo managed to do one first before her. This was all arranged by Tommy behind the scenes. It got so bad that Mariah actually had to end her contract with Sony. In our seventh spot, we have Nick Cannon. Although the ex pair share kids together, they still aren't on the best of terms. In an interview, Nick said that Mariah is still mad at him for some things that he has done in the past. Plus, just recently, when Nick got in trouble for making anti Semitic comments, Mariah threw shade at him through a social media post. On Instagram, she posted a photo of her dog and captioned it, Life's rough. She posted this hours after Nick got blasted. So people were like, ooh, that's for sure shade towards him. In our sixth spot, we have Demi Lovato. According to Demi Lovato, Mariah Carey is rude, and that's why Demi doesn't like her. It started back in June of 2016. A meme was going around showing Mariah next to Ariana Grande. The photo was captioned when you order it online versus when it arrives, suggesting that Ariana is nothing compared to Mariah. Well, Demi saw this and commented, you got it the wrong way around, honey. Later, Demi provided an explanation for what they meant by this. Demi said, Mariah is a legend and so talented, but constantly disses people. It's nasty the way she treats Jennifer. I'm afraid to say shit. The woman is mean for no reason. Extremely talented? Yes. Superhuman? Possibly. Unnecessarily rude? Absolutely. Mariah didn't take this lightly and she played the whole I don't know them card and then told Demi to introduce themselves and share their opinions face to face. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Jenny McCarthy. After Mariah Carey's New Year's Eve failed performance, actress Jenny McCarthy had much to say on her Sirius XM radio show. She went on to say that Mariah blaming the production company for her performance was incredibly insulting. Apparently, Mariah didn't even participate in sound check, where she could have tested out if everything was working properly. So that's on her. Furthermore, Jenny said, and I quote, I mean, her voice is not there anymore. I don't believe there was a problem with her inner ears. I just don't. I think she used it as an excuse. You heard me correctly. Jenny thinks that Mariah was never going to be able to sing in the first place. So she made up excuses that her earpiece wasn't working. I'm not sure what Mariah said in response to that, but knowing her, she probably threw some shade right back at Jenny. Coming in our fourth spot, we have Christina Aguilera. In 2006, Christina Aguilera revealed to GQ an unpleasant experience she had with Mariah at a party. She said, and I quote, One time we were at a party and I think she got really drunk, and she had some really derogatory things to say to me. That's not good. But of course, Mariah responded and threw a lot of shade back at Christina. 
Mariah said, I had hoped that Christina was in a better place now than the last time I saw her. When she showed up uninvited at one of my parties and displayed questionable behavior. She continued on saying, It is sad yet predictable that she would use my name at this time to reinvent past incidents for her promotional gain. It is in my heart to forgive and I will keep her in my prayers. Hot damn, Mariah. If you come for her, it's pretty clear that she's gonna just come right back at ya. In our third spot, we have Nicki Minaj. Mariah and Nicki's beef was very public. It happened when the two were judges together on American Idol season 12. The two came for each other multiple times on the show. Multiple. But before the first episode even aired, two clips from the show surfaced online. One is a video where Nikki just snaps. She says, and I quote, I told them I'm not putting up with her effing highness no more. I'm not gonna sit here every effing minute to have you come down and harass me every minute every day. So we already knew that having them as judges together was going to be juicy. Plus there were so many times throughout the season where the two would just make snarky remarks at each other. There even was a rumor going around that Nikki threatened Mariah with a gun, but Nikki and the producers denied these claims. In our second spot we have Eminem. This feud seems so random, like Mariah and Eminem, like it's it's a random duo. It all started in 2002 when Eminem made reference to Mariah in his song Superman. In the song he says and I quote, what you trying to be my new wife, what you Mariah fly through twice. He continues on saying I beg Mariah to take me back. But according to Mariah, the two never dated or hooked up. She said they talked on the phone and hung out around four times. A year later, Mariah was on tour and parodied Eminem. In her song Clown, she has the lines, and I quote, You should have never imitated we were lovers, when you know very well we never even touched each other. Then in 2005, Eminem responded by playing voicemails from Mariah. So on and so on. It just keeps going on. Eminem's all like, babe, we had something going on. And Mariah's like, nah, nice try. And in our number one spot, we have Jennifer Lopez, but we don't know her. This has to be the most famous Mariah feud of all time. It all started back in the early 2000s when Mariah was interviewed by a foreign TV station. One of the questions they asked was about several pop stars, her rivals, and what she thought about them. She begins with Beyonce and she says that she's nice and a good writer. When asked about Jennifer Lopez though, uh, she says, I don't know her. And that my friends is how the I don't know her Mariah meme was created. Over the years the two have both subtly thrown shade at each other while still downplaying the feud. Kylie Jenner is one of the most famous people in the world. Because of this, she also has a lot of enemies. Following the Astroworld Festival that was put on by her boyfriend, Travis Scott, celebrities are coming forward sharing their criticism of Kylie. At number 10, Kiki Palmer. So many people have opinions on the Car Jenners. The way they look, the way they act, their business, everything. A lot of people don't like them for a number of reasons, but actress Kiki Palmer has blatantly come out and talked about why she dislikes the Car Jenners, specifically Kylie. Kiki has shown sympathy in the past for Kylie because of the insecurities that Kylie has professed, but Kiki isn't too fond of how Kylie went about dealing with those insecurities. A lot of the Car Jenners show off their appearances all the time, and many of them have had plastic surgery, but Kiki doesn't seem to like that Kylie flaunted how she changed her appearance like her sisters. The actress believes believes that Kylie went about dealing with her insecurities in the wrong way and she hates the fact that she's been praised for this paid glow up. In an interview, Kiki spoke out about all of this where she said, quote, In the sense of the Kardashians, it's like, I'm going to show you so much perfect and be everything a woman should be or everything a man would like or love. Specifically in the situation of Kylie, where you've had a young girl people have seen on television since she was a kid and they literally told her she was so ugly, the ugly person in the family. She went and did apparently everything the world deemed as beautiful. The even crazier part is that everybody loves her for it. End quote. Kiki has deemed Kylie inauthentic and that's why she dislikes her so much. And at number 9, Kylie Minogue. Before there was Kylie Jenner, Kylie Minogue was the most famous Kylie. But in 2015, Jenner tried to trademark the name Kylie and Minogue fought back. 
The Australian pop star shaded Jenner when she tried to trademark their first name. According to the US Patent and Trademark Office, in 2015 Jenner tried to register Kylie in the US for advertising services and endorsement services. But Kylie Minogue's team filed their own charges to ensure the trademark did not go through. Minogue claimed it would quote, damage her own reputation. In the legal documents, Minogue's team classified Jenner as a quote, secondary reality television personality known for her quote, photographic exhibitionism and controversial posts on social media. Very savage. Then Minogue tweeted, quote, Hello, my name is Kylie, hashtag light years, insinuating that she was here way before Jenner. After this whole debacle, it's clear the two do not like each other. At number eight, Madison Beer. There are a handful of people in Hollywood who have their grievances with Kylie's beauty brand. In the past, she's been accused of copying the same packaging as Jeffree Star's makeup brand, but she's also had some beef with Madison Beer because the singer accused Kylie of stealing Madison's purple palette idea from back in 2017. In October of 2017, Kylie released her purple palette from her Kylie Cosmetics brand, and soon after the collection was made public, Madison shaded Kylie on Instagram, alleging that Kylie betrayed her. Madison posted on Instagram saying quote, when people fully steal your idea and they come out with what was supposed to be a collab, whack, end quote. Though the collab between Madison and Kylie was never confirmed, Madison appeared to have hinted at it back in March of 2017 when talking to paparazzi. I could imagine how hurt you would feel if you worked on something just for it all to fall through with you but still be sold. That would be a serious punch to the gut. When a follower called Madison out on being salty about the whole ordeal and that she didn't invent purple eyeshadow, the singer clapped back saying, quote, You sound very unintelligent. Who in their right mind would think they invented an eyeshadow color or shade? That is not at all in any way what I said or even slightly implied. End quote. Apparently, Kylie and Madison were friends before all of this happened, so I wonder if they're over it now or if that ruined their friendship. In at number 7, Paris Jackson. Kendall and Kylie got tons of backlash when they released a series of vintage t-shirts for their clothing line and photos of legends like Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, and the, the Doors and Ozzy Osbourne were beside their own on the shirts. Tons of celebrities called out the sisters for their tone-deaf decision, including Paris Jackson, the daughter of the late Michael Jackson. Paris took to Twitter and wrote, quote, As a huge fan of Zeppelin, The Doors, Floyd, I mean, these bands literally helped shape who I am today. I can't condone this fashion. Legends like these who completely changed our world today, not just the music world, should be respected and honored, not turned into this. Pink Floyd is not Chanel, Led Zeppelin is not Michael Kors, Metallica is not Givenchy. Don't get it twisted. Hashtag bands not brands and hashtag respect music. Along with getting tons of heat, the sisters were also slapped with multiple lawsuits, so they decided to stop selling the shirts shortly after their release. At number 6, Selena Gomez. Another celebrity who seems to have had beef with Kylie is former Disney star Selena Gomez. Turns out that Selena had an on and off again friendship with the Jenner sisters and it all stemmed from Justin Bieber. During the time that Selena and Justin were a thing, Selena started feeling a little iffy about Kylie specifically because she thought that Kylie was flirting with Justin. Selena and Kylie apparently got into a confrontation in 2014 because of it and it all went down at Justin's house. According to sources, what happened that evening was that Kylie allegedly, quote, sent sexy pics of herself to Justin, and that's what started the fight. Selena saw the pictures on Justin's phone and she freaked out and immediately left, end quote. The source also commented on the Jenner sisters saying, quote, Kylie and Kendall live in such a fantasy world with what the show has turned their family into. At the end of the day, Selena was just there to be a part of the show and enhance their brand rather than being legit friends. Thankfully, Selena realized that she was being used and got out." End quote. Some sources also claim that Selena stopped being friends with the Jenners because of their use of substances, drinking and partying, but the Jenners have denied those claims. Halfway number 5, Lourdes Leon. Lourdes Leon, daughter of Madonna, dissed Kylie after Lourdes was invited to Kylie's birthday party in 2015. Apparently, she finds the Kardashian family vile and was horrified about the invite. A source revealed that Lourdes shaded Kylie over her social media activity and selfie taking. After she received the invite, a source exposed, quote, She couldn't believe Kylie thought that she'd be receptive to a party invite and has completely ignored her. As far as Lourdes is concerned, she's not going to lower herself to even responding. Adding that Lourdes is very picky about who she spends her time with and Kylie doesn't make the cut. The source added that Lourdes' friends are, quote, much more interested in changing the world than in taking selfies. And in my opinion, you must really hate someone if the thought of them inviting you to their birthday leaves you horrified. At number 4, Amber Rose. The Kardashians have caused a lot of tension in the past in case of their relationships. 
There's been so much drama with cheating, rumors, babies, and so much more. So it's not surprising to know that Kylie is hated because of relationship quarrels. Amber Rose has had some harsh things to say about Kylie in the past, especially when it came to her relationship with rapper Tyga. Tyga had left Black China, the mother of his son, for Kylie, and Amber did not approve of that at all. During a radio interview, Amber spoke out about that drama when she said, quote, She's a baby, she needs to go to bed at 7 o'clock and relax. That's ridiculous. Tyga should be ashamed of himself. That's how I feel, for sure. He has a beautiful woman and a baby and left that all for a 16 year old who just turned 17. End quote. Amber wasn't the only one to comment on Kylie and Tyga's relationship, but her commentary definitely had some heat. And at number 3, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star has been coming for Kylie publicly ever since she came out with an online makeup company that was a competitor to Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Their feud is totally one sided, but I'm sure that Kylie has seen all the shade that Jeffree has dished out. Back when Jeffree was famous for his makeup reviews, he reviewed Kylie Cosmetics on multiple occasions, and more often than not, he trashed her products. When reviewing her over $300 brush set, he called it cheap dollar store product. Jeffree and Shane Dawson also trashed Kylie's skin in their review, where they called the products drying, irritating, and overpriced. Jeffree even shaded Kylie's Forbes cover, where she was declared the world's youngest self made billionaire. He said, quote, I declined the feature, so they had to pick someone. At number two, Amanda Stenberg. The most common scandal that the Kardashians seem to get involved in is something involving cultural appropriation. Many of the Kardashians have been accused of appropriating black culture and black fishing, and Kylie seems to be one of the worst offenders when it comes to these things. The internet has got really fired up when Kylie was seen wearing cornrows, and actress Amanda Stenberg went off on Kylie for it. The Hunger Games actress tweeted saying, "Quote: When you appropriate black features and culture, but fail to use your position of power to help." black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism, hashtag white girls do it better. End quote. On top of that, Amanda also posted a video titled Don't Cash Crop on My Cornrow, explaining that quote, the line between cultural appropriation and cultural exchange is always going to be blurred, but here's the thing. Appropriation occurs when a style leads to racist generalizations or stereotypes where it originated but deemed high fashion, cool, or funny when the privileged take it for themselves. End quote. Amanda already took a disliking towards Kylie after that, but that didn't seem to do much because she kept posting in cornrows after that. And finally, at number one, Black China. There is absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind that Black China hates Kylie Jenner. I think pretty much anyone would hate the woman that your boyfriend left you for. Back in 2014, Black China was in a long term relationship with Tyga. The pair even had a son together. But that all changed when Kylie came into the picture, and Tyga left China for a 16 year old Kylie. Kylie and Tyga dated for two years before splitting. At this time, tons of China's friends and family were shading Kylie for breaking up a family, including Amber Rose. Apparently, Kim Kardashian was even friends with China while she was with Tyga. And Kim said that China was devastated when she found out the Tyga was leaving her and their three year old son King Cairo for Kylie. Years later, China would get in a long term relationship with Rob Kardashian, Kylie's half brother, and have a child with him. Some even speculate that Black China got with Rob purely out of spite so she could make Kylie's life hell. At number 10, Sam Smith and Jonathan Zeisel. Now, for this couple, I don't know if I'd say they hate each other, but there's definitely some shade, so this counts enough for me to include it. Also, the shade here is kind of juicy, so I just had to talk about it. Sam Smith went official with Jonathan back in early 2015, just for them to break up shortly after confirming their relationship. Though the public was only made aware of their relationship for a short time, they must have spent a lot of time together prior, since Sam wrote a lot about him and his dating Jonathan. It seems like their breakup did wonders for Sam's music career, though we haven't been made aware of any specifics about their relationship. Since Sam wrote so much about their relationship, his album containing these details wound up winning him Record of the Year. During his acceptance speech for this award, Sam said, quote, Just a quick one, I want to thank the man who this record is about who I fell in love with last year. Thank you for breaking my heart because you got me four Grammys. The shade, but also true though. Sometimes you just need to get your heart broken to evolve and be better. At number 9, Naomi Campbell and Vladislav Doronin. Naomi Campbell and ex Vladislav are not at all on good terms following their breakup. Turns out there may have been some theft going on after they broke up and now they're suing each other. This is a classic case of he said, she said in the courts. Naomi originally sued her ex because she claimed that he stole some of her belongings after their breakup, but now Vladislav is copping back by throwing 
a countersuit in Naomi's face, claiming that the situation is actually the other way around and that Naomi actually stole from him. Really, I don't know what to believe, but the bottom line here is that there's some serious animosity. The pair broke up all the way back in 2013 and are only now being sued, so obviously there have been some tensions this whole time. They're both so rich that they honestly could have just brushed it aside, but I don't know man, there seems to be something else going on here other than just theft to have them at each other's throats this whole time. At number 8, Rihanna and most of her exes. Rihanna is one of the most boss ass B words in the industry hands down. She's a strong independent woman who puts her needs first and takes no nonsense from anyone and I wholeheartedly admire that. One of the things that I admire about Riri is her composure when it comes to her relationships. When a relationship ends, she doesn't dwell on the past and she just moves on with her life. Even after her breakup with billionaire Hassan Jamil, she just walked away and continued on with herself. When people judge Rihanna for breaking up with her partners, they kind of sound dumb to be honest. I mean, obviously Rihanna is in these relationships for the partner and if she doesn't feel like it's satisfactory, she's gonna leave, period. It doesn't matter if they have money or status. But even if she doesn't dwell on the past, that doesn't mean she doesn't say anything about her relationships. In an instance of subtle shade towards her exes, Rihanna said, quote, none of my exes are married or in happy relationships, so it's safe to say that I wasn't the problem, lol. Nuff said, Re. Nuff said. At number 7, Sophia Bush and Chad Michael Murray. Sophia and Chad were one of the hottest couples of the early 2000s. After meeting on the set of their show One Tree Hill, the two were engaged and wed in 2005. But only after 5 months of marriage, they split up and there's been tensions ever since. Sophia once said that she never wanted to marry Chad in the first place and that it was the people around her as well as the One Tree Hill producers who pressured her into the marriage and said that the whole thing was a bad idea. When asked about her relationship with Chad in an interview with Andy Cohen, she said, quote, My mother said to me that if you don't have any anything nice to say, not to say anything at all. Yikes. Obviously, she still has some hard feelings towards her ex. At number 6, Lucy Hale and Chris Silka. Lucy and Chris dated briefly back in 2012 and following the split, there was some animosity. Though Lucy never reportedly said anything about her ex, Chris said plenty. After a fan tweeted at Chris saying that his girlfriend, this being Lucy, was gorgeous, instead of replying with a compliment or anything nice really, he instead replied with quote, don't have a girlfriend, she decided she was too good. Yikes, dude. I guess their breakup wasn't exactly mutual. He then went on to pose the idea that Lucy was just trying to social climb and used him for status in the relationship, then tweeted, quote, There's a difference between celebrities and movie stars. Celebrities fade away while movie stars stick around forever. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds a little bit salty. Just a tad. Halfway through at number 5, Noah Cyrus and Lil Xan. Noah and Lil Xan broke up in 2018 and their breakup was messy to say the least. Though they were only together for a short time, their breakup was brutal and very public. It started with the cheating allegations and went on from there. Lil Xan accused Noah of cheating and Noah shut down those allegations and then the cheating allegations were put on Lil Xan. Both parties shared their feelings on Instagram stories and they even pulled the plug on a music video that they had made together because of the drama. There was a lot of drama on social media regarding this. Honestly, I don't know why they chose to make this breakup so public. I mean, they easily could have just said the things they did over the phone. The fact that their fans were involved in their breakup and even had receipts to share about them was just really making the situation 10 times worse. They've recently been seen together amidst the pandemic, but there's no doubt that at the time, they surely hated each other and their fans hated them too. At number 4, Charlie Sheen and Brett Rossi. Charlie Sheen has been sued by his ex, Brett Rossi. That's how you know when you hate your ex. You sue them. But it's for good reason. Rossi sued the former Two and a Half Men star back in 2015 for allegedly hiding his HIV status from her while they were in a relationship, as well as allegedly forcing her to get an abortion while they were together. Rossi also alleged that she was abusive towards her on multiple occasions. Despite originally saying that she would settle when Sheen offered a million dollars as settlement, she later went back on that deal and decided to take him to court for the allegations instead. After hearing the things that Rossi was accusing Charlie 
Polyev, I'm honestly not surprised that she engaged in the legal battle. The details of her allegations towards him are pretty serious and brutal, so it's quite understandable why she would hate him. At number 3, Kim K and Chris Humphreys. Though nowadays we rarely, if ever, hear stories come out about Kim K and her very brief marriage to Chris Humphreys, there are still some instances where Chris will come out with some shade about his short-lived relationship. The two were married in August 2011, but divorced just 72 days later. The basketball star has been sort of bitter since the split and has even alleged that Kim was cheating on him with Kanye from the beginning. In the past, Chris has said that since the split, he's been focusing on things that he can control as a bit of a shady nod to Kim's flip-flopping in the relationship. And even after Kim's internet breaking paper magazine spread, he has said, quote, I'm not someone who's paying attention to things that don't really matter in my world. Chris has said that following their divorce, he was really hated by Kim's fans and that he was in a dark place in the aftermath of their marriage. He's pretty upset at the whole situation. It seems like maybe not directly because of Kim, but because of the situation situation and its publicity. At number 2, Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson. At the time, Ariana and Pete's relationship slash engagement was cute, but after their breakup, that's when things kind of turned ugly. When they called off their engagement, Ariana told press that her relationship with Pete was a quote, distraction, frivolous and fun and insane and highly unrealistic. Pete has also gotten some jabs in there through his comedy show, saying that if he had done what Ariana did by quote, spray painting himself brown and hopping on the cover of Vogue and talking about his ex, then his career would be over. Harsh. Mm. The back and forth never really stopped as they seemed to casually talk about each other. Ariana claimed that Pete never stopped talking about the relationship for relevance, tweeting, quote, For someone who claims to hate relevancy, you sure love clinging to it, huh? Saltiness all around, guys. Through songs and comedy specials, their relationship sure did a lot for them career-wise, but not so much emotionally, it seems. And finally, at number one, Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. Mariah and Nick's relationship seemed pretty okay until their divorce in 2014. Though they cited that their breakup got messy because emotions got in the way, specifically regarding their kids, some think that something messier took place. While performing in Tokyo in 2014, Mariah took the first swing at Nick while singing Billie Holiday's song, Don't Explain. The song that is already about infidelity had its lyrics changed by Mariah from I know you cheat, right or wrong, don't matter, to I know you cheated, mother effer. I mean, does it get any worse than that? It really doesn't. She literally called Nick out on stage for cheating in front of a lot of people. That's some hatefulness right there, people. Enough said. Hey everyone, what's up and is it bad? Ugh. I don't know what else to do. Like when I talk, can you still hear it in the background right now? Can you hear it in the background? But like could music c cover it or no? In 2006, Christina Aguilera in 2006, Christina Aguilera revealed. Wow, and she had just, and she, and she, and she had just really. Oh, a year later, Mariah was on tour and Perry, Perry, parodied, par, parodied. In her song, Clown, she has the lines, and I quote, you should have never imitated, no, it is imitated, yeah. And there you have it, folks. That's uh, the wrong title, anyway. And there you have it, folks. Can you guys think of any more, uh, what was this video? Oh, Mar Mariah Carey. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Can you think of any more celebrities that does, that does it? So let's do some comment shout outs from top 10 celebrities who are unrecognizable in their movie roles. Boa Gaming says, Nanny McPhee is one of my favorite movies and up. I am 58 and I just love them. I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are. These are classic films. They are so good, so heartwarming. It's just, it's great. It's a really good film, both of them, to watch like a rainy day when it's gloomy and sad. You want just, you know, a feel good film. Other than the first like few minutes of Up. That's pretty sad. But the rest of it's cool. Emily QS says, I agree with you about half of this list. Some were like, if you knew the actor well enough, you could still see them. But yes, truly, some of them were totally different. So cool. Yeah, I mean, I, when I was writing this script, um, I was like, 
just looking at things was like, huh, I didn't know this person was in this, or hmm, they really do look different. You know, there's a lot of people to go through, so I'm sure we're gonna have another part two or something down the line. But yeah, there's there's a lot to go through, and some of them very, very impressive. Kira Giraldi says, hashtag notification squad. By the way, I love this account. I often binge watch it, so thank you for your effort, hard work, and amazing content. Thank you. Um, we try really hard here, but it's all for you guys. We love your feedback. We love it when you're talking about the videos. We love engaging with you guys, so it's super, super fun. 